So yeah, short uh, overview. So introduce myself, some definitions for those who don't know art. Porting, reproducible, CI, and conclusion. So I'm, uh, yeah, Jelle van der Waal. I've been involved with Arsenius for way too long and touched almost everything. I work at Red Hat, but this is my hobby. <laughs> um, also involved in the reproducible build uh, project, and uh, yeah, let's continue. So for those who don't know, Arts Linux, it's a rolling release distribution, so there's no point releases. Every month we uh, produce an ISO, you can install Arch, and from then there uh, you just update continuously till the end of time. We have our own package manager, Pacman, so this is also different from other distributions. And we were early adopters of System D and basically used like most of the things, so why not also make OSI? So make OSI, you all probably already heard your introduction before. Um, so I'll skip over that. There's some alternatives. Um, OS built, developed by Red Hat, has Arsenic support, because I added it. Um, there's Kiwi, um, this also supports Arsenic. I didn't test it, but you know, we like systemd, so we're, we're gonna look at uh, make OSI. So what do we actually produce every month for two weeks? Uh, we provide one uh, virtual machine image. This is basically to toy around, so you get like a user arts, and you can log in with arts, and you can just try it out. We have a cloud image. image. Uh, this is, has no user account. It's just for like, I have a VPS. I want to install arts on there. I boot the cloud image image. I add my SSH key in the config file, and then voila, you're done. We have some vagrant images, if anybody still uses it, and we support the two, two providers, so Libford and VirtualBox, and you need a separate image for both of them. We have the Arch ISO, so this is the monthly released ISO. You can install Arch from there, you can do like recovery if you broke it, but you know, that never happens. Um, I pick the image, but I won't be discussing that, and a container image, but this is mostly we built one ourselves, but we have also have an official Docker uh, image on Docker Hub, and that's built for us, so that's out, out of our control. So I won't, also won't go into that. So the current uh, situation is, of course, we have some nice bash scripts. They work. They're not that bad. They're pretty readable. Um, but maybe we can do better. Um, we release every two weeks, so this is all GitLab CI automated. And building requires root privileges. This is, yeah, less ideal, I would say. Maybe we can do better. And this is all built and actually tested, so we test boot um, stuff in, in GitLab CI with our own custom runner. Um, so porting to make OSI, this is actually fairly trivial. It took me like half a day, a day. Basically, you create the makeosi config file, you add the packages you want, you have the extra directory, here you add like, for our images we need like an extra systemd service, we, uh, ours by default doesn't start SSH, so you add like a uh, systemd preset where you automatically start SSH, uh, repart for some custom partitioning, fairly trivial, easily done. Next. Um, so what what I ended up with was uh, the other great feature with make OSI has is profiles. So we, I have like a vagrant directory, and then you have a libvirt profile and a virtualbox profile because basically they're almost the same thing, uh, except a few packages. So that's where the profiles come in handy. The same goes for the the uh, the cloud images or the the cloud image and just QEMU image. They're almost the same, except the cloud init image is resized, shrunk to like the smallest size. So this has a, they share the same uh, boot partitions, but in the cloud init um, repart config, there's just shrink it to the smallest size. The basic image is make it a 40 gigabyte image. So that was pretty, pretty trivial as well. There were some challenges. Um, we use a butter of a swap file for, and that's not really easily uh, do uh, creatable on, but uh, during the build, because also because you might not build on a butter of um, file system, so this would be 
has to be moved to like a systemd service on boot or maybe like a better technology like set ram or set cache z swap um the authorized keys so these need to be installed for vagrant because they um basically have a public private and uh, public key the private key is in the vagrant package so it, it can ssh in the boot up machine and uh, the public key you need to install in this image um as we want to try to do it unprivileged, we cannot install this as the Vagrant user in the image. So the solution for that is to uh, make a systemd temp files. So also not super hard, or uh, but I ideally I would have this already installed like in the image itself on the right directory, but temp files is an acceptable solution. Um, then we have the, the output. So a make OSI only supports, well, it supports mul multiple output formats, but for disk images, it's just a raw disk image. For, uh, we want like a QCOW image, or, and for the Vagrant, we need something else. But for that, there's the uh, make OSI .post out, uh script, and you can, it's, you can write a bash script here, like for example, this one, which is okay. <laughs> It's acceptable, basically it converts the raw image into a QCOW here. It writes some metadata and then it tars it up and that's basically what they call a vagrant box. So this is quite doable and you're still left with some, some bash, but it's okay. So the other property uh, I was personally interested in is like, if we're not rolling our own solution, can we also make a reproducible image. We are working hard on making reproducible packages, so why not? And for reproducible builds, I, I use the official reproducible builds project definition. So given the same source code, build environment, and build instructions, everybody should be able to, like the image we ideally sign and distribute, you should be able to git clone a repository, run make OSI, get that image, and then gpg ss verify with the image you downloaded from our website, and it should just pass. That's the mat, that should just work in the ideal uh, circumstances. So yeah, so like I said, we are already doing um, reproducible builds for packages since 2019 or some. Uh, we joined some summits, and we have, so far we have an environment where we uh, take the repository packages we rebuild them again and then compare the hashes and we're 90%, um, of course, we're like 90% reproducible and then the 10% is like the hardest stuff to get done because this requires like Haskell um, to get become reproducible and a lot of work. Um, interesting note is that we are uh, container image, the packages on that, they are fully reproducible, so it was like achieved this year, yeah, March this year, so that's pretty cool, but that doesn't say anything about the container itself. And I haven't looked at it, but just, it's here. So usually if you're looking into reproducibility issues, you have to deal with like, usually three, but we're packaging four uh, of these issues. So one is uh, timestamps, for that, we have source date epoch. This is an environment variable. And you set this to an epoch value. The build tool you use, uh, if it sets, it takes this value for, uh, for example, you have a software which um, emits like the release date or the, uh, the build time version, then it's replaced with this environment variable and then it will, the time sum will be the same as the previously built one. So then it's reproducible. Um, another issue is like recording the host name or you're, or you're building on the kernel used. Um, then there's like file system or a sorting related issue, build paths which get end up and which differ per machine. And the last fun one is the post install scripts which some packages might have. They can produce any, any random output which might not be reproducible. Um, for Mako's Eye, some prior work has been done by Atlas Systems, so that was awesome to see. Um, but they have a, um, they built more an embedded image with a squash of uh, image, and we want to build like a full distribution image. But 
they already did like a bunch of hard work in repart and make OSI to clamp. For example, they added the source date epoch option to clamp the enzymes. There's a seed option, so systemd repart generates uh, predictable partition UUIDs, so that these aren't randomized. So with that, re reading that, I was like, no. We have this diffoscope. This came out of the reproducible bolts project. It's basically a diff on steroids. So say you have like a package, it can unpack this. Say the package has like a zip file, it unpacks the zip file, and then you have a jar file in there, then it can like de run some decompiler on it and then present this in a nice diff overview. So, you know, I'll build two images. I compare them and that didn't really work. <laughs> Because turns out this is not yet, this is a thing to, which needs to be improved on. It basically tries to binary diff them and then I ran out of memory. So maybe I shouldn't try to, to compare two images. Uh, make OSI can also output to a directory. That sounds like a good plan. I can just compare two directories. And yeah, that should be doable. So I made the following like script. We export like the, uh, the source date epoch to some fixed date. And we just built a directory with just systemd installed and see how this goes. So we run it twice, once in foo, once in bar. We compare it and voila. We had two, two I have found two differences. So one is the GDFC package generates as a post install script some uh, libconfig uh, caching file. This seems to be some sorting issue. I didn't look to it. I don't have all the time. Um, but basically, this can be removed because this is automatically regenerated. So that was easy to do. The other one is the Pac-Man local database. So this stores all the packages you have installed on your system. And it also contains the install date field. And then, yeah, well, we look at the C code. And then, yeah, OK, it takes the current time. That's not really useful, so there's now a, pack, a, pack, a merge request which I made to let this take source date epoch, and then we always get like a predictable installation time. Uh, but for now, we have a workaround to just set it to zero for demonstration purposes. It probably should, uh, in example, should set it to like source date epoch value, but. <clears throat> With this, it will have, well, I had a quick hack, so. Um, but you know, an image with only systemd is not really useful, so let's add like a Linux and a bootloader and some other packages and, re and basically rerun this again. Another point I didn't fi uh, point out is that the package that we need, uh, we used uh, to install, this also needs to be the same package set. And our Linux archives every day the uh, current state of the repository. So we have one fixed uh, in time repository from which we can install. So that's all solved the other problem. And then I got some new issues. Now a UKI was um, created. Diffiscope also doesn't like that. It tries to object dump the UKI and it's like 100 megabytes. This takes forever. And the output is not something I can parse. Um, so that was one issue. And the other issue is systemd boot generates a random seed file, which, well, it's a random seed. It's not reproducible. So um, that got, um, the random seed got removed. Um, so make OSI main no longer um, generates this. That's thanks to Dan. And the EFI, uh, so the Yuki, was not reproducible because the init ramfs uh, also contains the LD config cache, which is of course not reproducible. And thanks to Dan, make OSI also removes this now from the UKI. And another tip: if you want to diff to UKIs, then the best uh, there there doesn't seem to be any. I haven't found any good tools to unpack in the uh, UKI, so I just used UKI inspect and then. It basically prints out all the sections and the hashes, and then comparing the hashes, already found out like, ah, oh, inner term is not reproducible. I will have to just dump that and diff that. <clears throat> okay, so now we have like two directories which should be bootable. 
but this is not an, an image, and I want an image. Um, so this, this was some learning for me, so I didn't know that much before about systemd report. I didn't know that um, some make, make a fast implementations now support a, a router option, and you can basically give it a, a directory and then you will create a file system image uh, with this contents included. So this is awesome because this means you don't need a loopback device. You don't need to like MKFS an image, mount it with a loopback device, copy over data, and mount it again. And that, of course, has like the um, the problem that the, that mounting changes some file system metadata probably, and copying over changes timestamps. So this is great. For VFAT, this uh, works a bit different. There's the, oh, there's a typo on my slide. There's the mcopy util from mtools. And this just copies a directory directory into uh, an image. So this is a bit of background information. So what I also did was um, test out, like, can I make like a reproducible uh, X4 image? And basically, this was what I used. So I allocated, uh, created two test images ran MakeFS on them. And then for uh, X4, there's actually a nice uh, tool to dump the uh, metadata. Up. And then, for example, I found out like this checksum is different. Um, so that's a little tip. Um, and looking around, I found out like, like VFAT, X4, F2FS, AeroVest, they all can all be made reproducible, given like source dig epoch or specific flags. ButterFS, XFS, which we want to use, uh, we, we want to use ButterFS on our image. Sadly, doesn't. I tried to write a patch uh, to to fix this for ButterFS. I patched one case, and then I was left with like 600 lines of binary diff. So that's still something uh, to figure out. <coughs> and DOSFS uh, tools is uh, what con contains make make makefs vfat. This requires a patch. It's not yet in the released version, and with that patch, you can make a reproducible image. So this is patched now in NixOS and Arch. I'm not sure if any of the other distros have it. So um, with that information, I decided to make an X4 image. And then I, I of course, got an, an two different images again. Um, and that turned out to be a, a bug in systemd repart where it didn't copy the, uh, didn't take the timestamps in account when copying the um, EFI and loader directories into the uh, FIFA, into the EFI, uh, well, ESP partition. This is now fixed in uh, system D. Thanks to Dan. And with that, I have this, sh ah, me, well, Basically, a screenshot of like my NAS where I built an image, and then on my laptop, and they produce the same uh, hash. I tried to do also. Do, uh, my idea was to like make a make a demo here, build it here live, build it on GitHub CI, but um, that didn't work out, of course, uh, because the <laughs> uh, because the Arch Linux containers uh, is a bit funky. So maybe next time. Um, but at least on a different system with also a different file system. So my NAS uses XFS for some reason, and my laptop uses ButterFS. I can get the same image. So that's awesome. I also tried for the, uh, for the Fedora fans here to build a Fedora. And I got an almost reproducible Fedora image built on Arch. So if the, the because the, the Arch tools yeah, and I only had like one strange issue in the root Im image. Um, yeah, so that's cool. So this can also be like, this work can also be copied to other distros. <clears throat> CI, I haven't spent too much time because I spent a lot of time in the reproducible, getting a reproducible image. Uh, but make OSI, the project itself, provides a, a GitHub action, so it's like super easy to get started if you use GitHub. We as Arch have our own GitLab, and we have unprivileged container where we cannot create a new namespace, so that doesn't really work. 
but where for our current workflow we have uh, we spin up dynamically boot a, a, mach a virtual machine and the uh, GitLab runner SSHs into this. So we can basically use the same to build um, a MakeOSI image. So it's not really super, super difficult. The benefit will be with MakeOSI is now we build this root and then we can build as an privileged user, so that's slightly better. Yeah, I think I have to wrap up. So conclusion is it's super easy to get started. Make MakeOSI take half a day, build some images, it's fun. You can make a reproducible image, and uh, yeah, that's it. And here's the links to the GitHub project. So. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jelle, for this nice talk. <laughs> Are there any questions? As far as I remember, Arch uh, supports different architectures like ARM and uh, no? Not officially, no. Not officially. There is a, a community-led fork which builds for ARM. We are interested in uh, adding Arch, uh, uh, ARM support, but yeah, we need some... Because I was going to ask a question if you built uh, images for, for different architectures, uh, no. No, no. Thank you. So you were using diffoscope, and I, I think you ran into out of memory errors. Yes. Um, what are you using diffoscope for? Is it just to verify that your <clears throat> builds are actually reproducible? No. So for that, I just I just generate a hash of the uh, like a MD5 sum or SHA sum. It doesn't really matter as long as they're the same. I just use I just have the um, for packages we compare like we use Diffoscope to compare them. So it's like muscle memory because it unpacks everything nicely. It's just a bit user friendlier. Okay. So would you like it if you didn't run out of memory or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, okay. My, the, so my follow-up plan is somewhere to find some time to see if I can write some patches for Diffoscope uh, to like. Because I, I, I know people who have done this kind of stuff successfully, and they use BSDs, binary diff tools, to do it. Ah, uh, but I mean, you can also use like CMP to compare okay. two images, right? That's, Fair enough. But uh, no, my plan is to propose a patch to like maybe depend on SG disks and then dump like the JSON output and then com you can compare them. That's already more useful than trying too hard to compare them. Um, so I checked and uh, Yukify Inspect does support saving of sections to files. Um, but uh, I don't think it can unpack things, but we can certainly add that. So maybe we can talk about uh, the right interface. Uh, but to, to respond to the uh, question that didn't happen about ARM images, I have a comment that um, MKSI is, in recent versions, is very big on operating from outside of the image. Uh, so like like uh, DNF dash dash install root and then you install packages. So if we had uh, ARM uh, Arch packages, then most likely we could create a cross build that would be quite nice to execute from an uh, AMD sixty four box. Some time ago, um, I worked for a company where we built live Im uh, systems. Mm -hmm. um, so, images that you can boot uh, over network. And I tried to make them reproducible as well and tried the first scope. And I had this exact same issue that it ran, ran out of memory. So, the solution was extract everything in the directory, then compare. So, you are not the first one. Yeah, I, ha I actually. I have some in my repository. I have some scripts where I just DD. I, I read the. Uh, I just DD out the partitions and then read only mount them, and then diffuscope them. That's what I found the easiest. But 
I will, yeah, so I think Diffiscope like tries to do the most intelligent thing and then if it can't, it just binary diffs the two and that obviously doesn't really work for an eight gig or two gig image. More questions? I don't see any. Okay, thank you, Yella. That was a very nice talk. <laughs> <laughs>